The Notch Filter, a useful tool in our toolbox. Hello, everybody. This is Phil Chenevere with a little um, LibriVox video on Notch Filter. Notch Filter. I can say that. Notch Filter. Now, you may, like me, have heard the words Notch Filter floating around on the forums uh, trying to help people uh, improve the quality of their recordings, but like me, you may have ignored it because it sounds like one of those uh, esoteric, complex things only professional sound engineers would use, and not poor old bumbling Phil. Well, I just found out yesterday that it's really just a cinch to use and exactly right for specific problems. You're looking at a track right here. The notch filter removes things like main hums, whistles, and other irritating background noises from your audio track. That's what it's supposed to do. Now, you may say, doesn't noise reduction do that? Yes, it does. But it's different from noise reduction in that it takes out a, uh, a narrow frequency from your recording, a notch, rather than the much broader spectrum. Let's look at this one right here that um, noise reduction takes out. This is a very noisy recording, I, sample recording I made. <clears throat> I have a, an old recorder that sounds like it's a jet taking off that I turned on for my grandkids, and it made this type of sound. You can see that it goes all across the spectrum here. Now, if you're using Audacity, it has a built-in notch filter way down here at the bottom. It's called Notch Filter. I like the way they label that. And if you aren't using Audacity, hopefully this will explain it a bit so that you can look for it on your editing software and not be afraid of using it. Uh, notch Filter is a lot more forgiving than noise reduction actually because it only attacks or removes one specific frequency a little band there rather than a whole broad spectrum okay let me explain what I mean by spectrum I'll bring up this again um, this particular window here is a tool built into audacity that analyzes sound you give it a little sample to look at and it will analyze it now this bottom here, pardon me, the bottom here, the horizontal axis, is the um, spectrum we're talking about, the sound spectrum of vibrations. Starts here at very low frequencies and running at 20, zero really, and running all the way up to 10,000 or more. Um, the vertical axis tells me how loud these particular frequencies are starts at negative 90 decibels which is silence really goes up the higher it goes the more louder the more louder that's correct the the much more louder your um, that frequency is we have a little spike here at 242 Hertz and now if I take this as a sample for noise reduction it will reduce all of these frequencies of this ambient noise you notice this is just noise that was happening. This is me talking. This is just ambient noise. This is an example of a bad, this is an example of a really bad 60 cycle mains hum that's disturbing me. All right. We have a 60 cycle hum in there. Uh, since I'm in the United States, I will use 60 cycles. Of course, Europe and other places use 50 for their AC, alternating current. Um, yesterday, I was working with the track, editing it, and I found a spike at 100 cycles, which is how I discovered the notch filter. So let's apply the notch filter. I'm going to take a sample here to show you what this looks like. Analyze plot spectrum. By the way, if you want to know how to get this particular tool, it's built into analyze plot spectrum. And just copy the boxes down here. A spectrum hamming window 4096 and log frequency <clears throat> and you'll get there otherwise it'll look a lot different from what the mine does so first thing I do is I, I take a sample get the frequency here it's obviously the peak frequency you see whoops frequency down here is at 60 well if I can I'll zoom in on 60 Hertz and it's a negative 13.2 decibels very loud hum so 60 I have my um, my frequency. I know what frequency I want to remove from this track. Let's listen to this. 
This is an example of a really bad 60-cycle mains hum that's irritating me, yes. Now, ordinarily I would apply that to the whole track, but here I'm just going to apply it to part of the track. Go to Effect, Notch Filter. I know the frequency is not 69, it's 60. Type that in. The Q factor. Q tells it how wide a band on either side of that frequency do you want to take out. 4 or 5 is a good way to start. I'll put it on 4. And I'm not going to explain it because that is somewhat technical. So, let's remove that. Boop. And listen. This is an example of a really bad 60 cycle mains hum that's disturbing me. So I took out just that particular little band of frequencies. I did not touch anything else in the track. So Notch Filter did that. It may, it doesn't remove other frequencies, so you may still have noise in the track and you would probably select another section and do a little noise reduction there if you want. Now let, this is an example of a whistle. I'm going to see if I can put a higher pitch tone in here to example of a whistle or something like that. And I did, didn't I? So let's take a sample of that. Analyze it, plot spectrum. So I have a peak at, it tells me, 7048. No, it's at 60, 69.50 close. So I would um, notch filter. 6950. Oh, that's why those other ones were in there, huh? And I'm going to see if I can put a higher pitch tone in here to example of a whistle or something like that. And I did, didn't I? So if you analyze your track and you see that you have big spikes here and there, and you see a big spike, like I found my spike at 100, this one's at 60 could be anywhere up in here, then you may want to try the notch filter to remo remove that very gently from your um, track. You can also apply notch filter to many different um, uh, frequencies. If you have a spike here, a spike over here, and it works very well without, without really causing any artifacts or stuff like that. Okay, I've spoken long enough. I hope you understand a little more about notch filter like I do, and I do intend to use it when it's appropriate. So this is Phil Chenevere warning you that recording for LibriVox may lead to feelings of joy, happiness, elation, usefulness, and may be habit-forming.